Finland Saga is amazing. The plot, themes, and driving force behind it all is really, really good. The way it's able to send out life messages of all kinds while still keeping to its unique story is exceptional and honestly makes it one of my favorite seinen's just behind Berserk. The artwork it showcases and the way it's able to capture insane emotions with it really makes it worth to look at and keep reading the manga. I originally bought the manga and didn't watch the anime first as I heard the anime only covered one arc but that one arc still makes the anime worth watching. Still, today I'll be talking about Vinland Saga in a non-spoiler way, just trying to recommend it to people who haven't watched it yet. I'll try to give my thoughts on certain arcs up to the expedition arc in a non-spoiler way, as well as going over the characters and art this series amazingly gives out. Before I get into this talk, subscribe if you're new, hit the like button and turn on bell notifications to show some support to this channel. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing I'm going to be going through are the themes and setting of Vinland Saga. The themes are basically sorted on two different sides, one about pacifism and the other all out violence. These themes tackle each other mostly in the second arc of Vinland Saga and the way it's done is amazing. All Out Violence is basically the main world that Vinland Saga is. It's a world of Vikings and violence is seen as normal and something no one can get away from. It's rare to see someone get away from the thought of harming someone else to feel strong or prove a point, but on some occurrences, it's shown to happen. The Viking setting of Vinland Saga is a different layout for what I've read before. Mostly it wasn't as realistic as this and was just some dark fantasy. But I really loved how the Viking setting was shown as it showcased how bad people can be and think that this is all normal. It gives us the perspective of villains that we see as our main group. Askeladd, the leader of the group, is shown to be cunning and brutal while he still seems enjoyable as well. I'll get into him soon as he's basically one of our main characters of the series. But first I'll have to talk about the protagonist of Villain Saga. The so called driving force of the series and he who takes us on his journey of revenge and redemption. Thorfinn, son of Thors, is the main protagonist of Villain Saga and is an exceptionally good one. He's first seen as though he's a side character amongst the other driving forces of the series. Kanut and Askeladd are basically the ones who are in front of him in the first arc, but this is a really good setup for him as he was able to see the ways of those characters and try to forge his own one in the later arc. The main story of Thorfinn is pretty sad to see, and this is going to be a minor spoiler, but when he was a child, he witnessed the death of his father, Thors, by the hand of the Viking Askeladd. He then vowed revenge against him and made it his mission to avenge Thor's. His journey he takes part in is great to see as his small dynamic and mental apprentice relationship with Askeladd is significant for his growth as a character as we can see him develop his beliefs over the time of the series. In the farmland arc or farmland saga as I'd like to call it is the second arc of the series and in it Thorfinn is able to grow shockingly well yet surprising to see how he was in the prologue arc to where he is now. I'm not too caught up but I'm almost there but seeing how Thorfinn is now really makes me wonder how he's the same person in the first arc. Yukimura, the mangaka of Villain Saga, is able to create an enjoyable and amazing character like Thorfinn and make him absolutely change the direction of the story so well. Also, like I said before, I was going to talk about Askeladd. Wow. After reading Vinland Saga, Askeladd is one of my favorite antagonists in manga. He's able to be the antagonist, yet one of our main focusing characters of the series. He's complex and mysterious, while able to be an interesting character that is a viking, a person we're meant to despise and wonder how he's able to do all of the things he does with no hesitation. It's the world around him that shapes him to do these brutal things and the backstory he is given shows us his true hidden nature that we have wanted to see. Askeladd's relationship with Thorfinn is also a memorable aspect of the story as they're supposed to be enemies yet they fight alongside each other. Kanut and Askeladd's relationship is also something to talk about as Kanut is able to change as a person thanks to him. Askeladd basically controls the lives of Kanut and Thorfinn and changes them into something more. 
He's a very great antagonist, and if you haven't read Vinland Saga already, I highly recommend it to you so you can see his greatness. So the plot of this series is cut up into different arcs, like all mangas. I'm probably at the beginning of the current arc that's going on, but I can talk about the first two arcs that made Vinland Saga so phenomenal. The prologue and the farmland arcs. The prologue arc is about the revenge story of Thorfinn as he goes around with Askeladd's band of vikings, waiting to get his chance to have that duel that will make him victorious with a kill on his father's murderer. This arc kind of feels like a viking slice of life, showcasing us how vikings act in the world of Vinland Saga and how brutal they can be. Also the memorable characters such as Thorkell really makes the arc top tier, as well as seeing the battles he does makes it entertaining and fun to read or watch. Kanun's story is also vital to this arc as we can see him grow into a very important character that changes the direction of the series in many ways you have to read to find out. It's a great starting arc which gives us the whole theme of all our violence and how our characters view it. The next arc takes a very different direction. For this arc in the series, it literally has a different feeling which in my opinion is a really good choice to do after seeing the conclusion of the last arc. This arc is all about character growth and writing. It just shows how well Yukimura is able to craft many characters that are very well done. The narrative structure of it is done well, with Thorfinn looking back on his past decisions and able to build upon that, forging his own character and becoming the real protagonist of Vinland Saga. The farmland arc is my favourite arc of the series, but it's usually disliked by a minor group of people. I think the reason for this is because in this arc, it takes a step back from all of the action and focuses more on the writing of the plot and characters, which some battle crazed people wouldn't like as they enjoy the action and fighting a lot more. I could understand that, but sometimes you just need to enjoy some good story writing as well and not just fights. Now the art of villain saga in the manga is really good. It has definitely evolved over time, but when Yukimura wants a more simplistic scene, he draws it that way which suits it for that scene. He's able to draw detailed expressions and emotions for the story, engaging the reader to keep on reading. It's sometimes consistently amazing, and if you get the physical copies, it looks really, really great. Trust me, it does. So hopefully I wasn't able to spoil anything too big as I'm trying to give my thoughts on this series and get some people to read it. If you do, you wouldn't regret it. It's a must read for the seinen genre and I'll try to do more videos like this on some things I have read and thought they were really good. I'm currently reading through Vagabond so hopefully it's as good as Villain Saga or Berserk as they're all seinen giants. Hopefully you enjoyed and if you did make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video to show some support as well. It's been Endless Requiem, peace.